of the woodland. Ranger Bill, warrior of the woodland, struggling against extreme odds, traveling dangerous trails, showing rare courage in the face of disaster. In the air. On horseback. Or in a screaming squad car. Ranger Bill. His mind alert. A ready smile. Unswerving. Loyal to his mission. And all this in exchange for the satisfaction and pride of a job well done. Rangers just won't seem the same without you around, Ralph. I was thinking the same thing, Cal. Uh, you've all been very kind. Wasn't difficult, Ralph. We've all grown to like you and respect you as a ranger in the years you've been with us. In fact, that's the whole trouble. Trouble? That's right. Feels like somebody actually reads them reports we send in all the time. We finally heard enough praise about you that they decided to move you up. Well, I feel pretty mixed up about the whole thing, fellas. Naturally, I'm happy about the promotion. <laughs> There's a lot about tower sitting that can get a man down. But then on the other hand, uh, I like it here a lot. I don't ever expect to find a boss as terrific as you, Bill. Well, this is starting to sound like the Mutual Admiration Society, Ralph. <laughs> What's the matter, Stumpy? I was just thinking of a feller I heard once who got real hurt uh, while he was in the process of admiring. Uh-oh. I guess I don't have to announce that this is one of Stumpy's jokes. <laughs> <laughs> well, I'd hate to leave Naughty Fine without hearing at least one more. You see, some people appreciate my jokes. And he is leaving. <laughs> well, do you want to hear it or not? Uh, better make it quick, old-timer. Ralph's train's about to pull out. Well, it'll wait. Something about uh, admiring something, wasn't it? That's right, sonny. Shows you uh, how a feller can get into trouble that way. Well, let's have it. Well, uh, seems like this here window washer uh, meets another window washer on the street, and uh, uh, one says to the other, uh, how's that new feller you got uh, helping you working out? Well, the other feller says, uh, oh, he ain't uh, helping me anymore. So the first feller says, how come? And the other window washer says, <laughs> oh, he says, uh, we was uh, washing windows over on that skyscraper across town when this... Uh, New assistant of mine decided to step back and admire his work. <laughs> <laughs> oh, boy. I guess I'll miss your jokes about as much as I'll miss anything, Stumpy. Well, if you'd like, I'll pull every now and then. Uh, why not? <laughs> you let yourself in for that, Ralph. <laughs> With a couple of Stumpy's jokes, uh, I can make a real hit in my new post. We all wish you the very best, Ralph. Thanks very much, Bill. You'll probably be hearing from me soon, and, uh, well, I'd say quite often. I'll be calling on you for advice and handling all sorts of situations. I'll look forward to your call. Boy! Oops, uh, I better run. Thanks again for everything, Bill. I'll be getting in touch. Bye, Stumpy. Sheriff. Bye. Bye. Go along! a good ranger. You can say that again. Did you say something about that new man coming in today, Bill? Not only today, Cal, in a very few minutes. All worked out very well. Ralph is leaving and the new man at headquarters is sending to take Ralph's place arrives in just a few minutes. <laughs> I'll drive you straight to the hotel, Floyd. After you get settled and have a chance to brush off the train dirt, we'll take you around Naughty Pine. Thanks, Bill. It'll be very enjoyable seeing the actual buildings and places I've been reading about. Reading about? That's right, Cal. 
I make it a point to be thoroughly acquainted with the place before I go there. Uh, that way it saves time and helps me to get around more easily. Where'd you ever find anything on Naughty Pine? Mostly in the ranger offices in Central City. Uh, I've had a chance to study a few maps of Naughty Pine and surrounding area and to look over a great many reports from this office. I'm happy to think that at least someone is interested in these things. I must say, Bill, that you impress me as being a very fair man from the attitudes and experiences that were in these reports. I was very encouraged to come here to work under you. I'm glad you feel that way, Floyd. You seem like a pretty careful feller, Floyd. Well, I tried to be. I find that almost every situation can be prepared for, or at least anticipated in some way. Yeah, you go all the way, don't you? The information Colonel Anders sent ahead on you said you hadn't had a great deal of experience in the towers. That's true. Most of my training was centered around wildlife preservation. I suppose the only reason I'm being sent out here is the lack of men at present. Uh Uh-huh. However, uh, I've made it a point to read everything I could find on the subject, and firefighting. I've also gone over all your reports having anything to do with the firefighting or watch time procedures, and in theory, at any rate, I'm not completely lost. Say, uh, you sure make some of the rest of us look like lazy loafers. Of course, you'll have to work out with the men on firefighting drills and some other basic procedures. But it looks to me like you're off to a good start. Stumpy. Oh, uh, hello, Cal. Uh, Come on in. Be just a second. There. Now, uh, what was it you wanted, Cal? I was just uh, wondering what you thought of that new ranger, Floyd. (laughs) I was just thinking quite a bit about him. That's what this here list I typed up is about. Oh, what is it? He asked me to make out a list of things that I thought every good tower man ought to know. He sure is playing every angle, ain't he? What do you think about him? Well, it takes all kinds, Cal. Uh, some fellas you meet who are like that are pretty hard to get along with. This feller, Floyd, is right careful. But he seems like a nice enough feller in spite of his funny ways. Yeah, I guess so. Maybe the reason he kind of bothers me is because I know I ought to be more like him. Well, that explains a little of your discomfort. Of course, there's such a thing as being careful, but not about the right things. What do you mean? Well, like one of those little fellers that comes by here every now and then. You know, from over in the schoolyard. Yeah, you mean those little kids from over at the grammar school? That's right. Sometimes they're real careful. They don't do the right things carefully. Well, I still don't see how that could be. Well, the other day, one of them was over here, and he was uh, going to bring in some kittens that they had to show me. He went outside to get one of them, and I heard this yowling and mewing up a storm's worth from the kitten. Yeah, what was he doing? That's what I was wondering. So I called out to be right careful with them little kittens, Mike. And he shouts back, I'm being terrible careful, Mr. Stumpy. I'm holding them real careful by the stem. (laughs) (laughs) Uh, Is that uh, what you think Floyd is like? Who, me? Uh, no, I was just working the conversation around a bit to make a point and get in a joke. <laughs> Your point is a good one at that, old-timer. I wonder how often we spend great amounts of time and energy and great care doing things that are wrong, or at least not of much value. I guess you're right about that. Wish we had more time to talk about it, Cal, but right now we've got to take Floyd out to his tower. Do you mind uh, watching the station while we're gone, Cal? Sure, Bill. <laughs> And this is to be your new home, Floyd. Well, I'm very impressed. Of course, it'll look a little more homelike once you get some of your stuff up here. Yeah, I understand. Uh, I'll also give it a good sweeping out, too. That's right. <laughs> yeah, the maid don't like all them stairs, so she don't come around too often. <laughs> <laughs> well, I must admit, Bill, that I'd expected something far less comfortable. 
from the reports I've read, I gather that these towers, well, as I said, less comfortable. Now you see the old principle of seeing what we want to see, uh, Floyd, rather than what we do see. After spending some time up here, these towers do get a little depressing. The man who turns in a report when he feels depressed is apt to make the place sound terrible. On the other hand, you've come here hoping to be comfortable, and so it seems nicer to you. My only question is, uh, what is this place really like? (laughs) Over here is the two-way radio between the tower and Naughty Pine. In case of a fire or emergency, uh, you flip this switch and someone will answer right away. I don't mean to cut you short, Bill, but uh, this has all been explained in the literature on the subject and in training. What I'm more interested in is any peculiarities about this particular tower. Uh Uh-huh. Well, the only thing I can think of right off is uh, White Lake over there. Mm, What about it? Early in the morning, there's a dense mist that settles on it. That's how it got its name. Unless you knew about it, you might think it was smoke. Well, I'll remember that. Now, don't hesitate to call about anything at all. It'll take some time to get used to everything out here and... I'd rather you'd call and ask what seems to be foolish questions rather than for something to go wrong. Mm -hmm, I understand. Good. Now, over there is the radio. Sometimes there's something worth listening to on it. And as you can see, over there are a few books. Suppose you have a number of your own to bring up. Yes, I I do. I have no objection to your building extra shelves or anything of that kind. Oh, I'm glad of that. Uh, Is that a a, a Bible over there on the shelf? That's right. I'm glad to see that, too. Oh? Well, I've always wanted to read that book, but I've been too busy. Maybe I'll have time while I'm sitting up here. Well worth reading. Sure is. Yeah, I'm sure it is. Uh, even Enough people have been influenced by it through history. Well, uh, I've even been influenced a little by the quotes from it I've heard. I'll be interested in your reactions to it when you read it, Floyd. I'd like to talk with you about it. Fine. Well, now that uh, you've seen your way around the place... Let's say we go back down and see what we can do about moving some of your things up here. I'm glad to hear it, Floyd. Oh, yes. Far more comfortable than the room I lived in up in Central City. And uh, this one's (laughs) rent-free. This one probably has a better view than that other room, too, huh? Better view? Do you know that the birds came right up this morning to make sure I'm awake? Why, I don't see how anyone could get depressed by such a place. Well, remember, Floyd, you've only been out there for a few days. (laughs) I suppose that's it. Uh, have you had time to look into that Bible, Floyd? Oh, not yet, Bill. Too many things to get organized and take care of. Well, once I get the practical things out of the way, I think I'll have time enough to look at... There are some who feel that the Bible is more practical than most things. Well, I don't want to be unkind, Bill, but I think that someone like that doesn't have a great deal to do with their time. I wouldn't make that hasty a judgment, Floyd. When you begin reading it, you might change your mind. Mm, I doubt it. Well, I guess I'd better get my eyes back on the horizon and let you get back to work. Call in again tomorrow. Let me know how you're getting along out there. Will do. Bye now. So long. What was all that about hasty judgments and all, Bill? Uh, I didn't think Floyd would jump in anything without being fully prepared on the subject. Well, there's one thing that he seems to have missed along the way, Stumpy. What's that, Bill? God. afternoon melodies to bring you this special weather bulletin. There's a severe electrical storm moving in from the north toward the Naughty Pine area. The storm is short, but is leaving many flash fires behind it. All residents are advised to stay inside until the storm passes and to keep a constant check for any fire that may be caused by lightning from the storm. The Weather Bureau has issued this bulletin effective immediately and in effect until 4 o'clock this afternoon or until the storm passes and further notice is given. We now return you to Afternoon Melodies. That sure came up all of a sudden, didn't it? 
There was some mention of the possibility of such a storm in this morning's weather report, Cal, but I suppose no one took it very seriously. I'll get it. I'm right. Ranger headquarters, sheriff speaking. Bill? Yeah, he's right here. It's for you, Bill. Oh, uh, thanks, Cal. Hello? Oh, yes, sir. Uh-huh, we just heard it over the radio. That bad, huh? All right, sir, I'll alert the tower man to keep a sharp lookout. Right. Floyd? Oh, he seems to be working out very well. Yes. Well, he is a little. Well, I'll know more this afternoon. The storm is coming from his direction, so he'll be the key man. Right, Colonel Anders. Fine, sir. Goodbye. What the colonel want, Bill? He says this storm is causing a great many little fires through the woods. Most of them go out, but a few have had to be attended to. Uh, so he wants your tower men to be especially careful, huh? That's right, Cal. It's a little tricky. On the one hand, there will probably be too many fires springing up to keep under observation. And most of them will die out in the rain of the storm. But on the other hand, a few of those fires may actually develop into something we'll have to go out and fight. Now, it's up to the tower man to decide which is going to be the kind of fire to fight. Well, I'd better call the men and get them alerted. The rate that storm is coming in a second saved is like an insurance policy. <laughs> tower men are alerted. And I've called all the volunteer firefighters. They're ready to move as soon as they hear the siren. Good. And uh, not too soon. Sounds like there's a little activity out there already. Yeah, maybe for once if there is a fire, we'll have the jump on her, eh, Bill? That's what we can hope for. Whee! You should see the sky clouding over. Looks like there's going to be a corker out there. A corker is right, Stumpy. We have all our men alerted to the possibility of fires. This looks like it's going to be one of the snappiest electrical storms we've ever had. <laughs> Boy, sure getting dark in a hurry. I'll say. Uh, catch the lights, will you? Sure. The way things get dark so fast and all that crashing around out there makes you think of that verse from Joel where it says, The earth shall quake before him, the heavens shall tremble... The sun and the moon shall be dark, and the stars shall withdraw their shining. <laughs> yeah, a day like this sure helps you to picture that, huh? Sure does. I only hope we don't have to go out in it. If the air is full of lightning as it is out there, there isn't a safe place to hide. Yeah, sure is good that that storm is bringing the rain with it. Yeah, it's funny how a thing can be your enemy and your friend all at the same time. Well, if it's over Naughty Pine, that means that it's passed over most of the country between Central City and here. And no alarms from the towers means that it looks like the North Woods are pretty much out of danger. I hope you're not speaking too soon, Bill. Maybe the men are just watching to see which fires are going out and which ones are going on burning. I'll see who it is. It's Floyd's Tower. Hello, Floyd. Have you got something over there? Sure have, Bill. At first, it didn't look like I'd last, uh, but in, in the space of about a minute, it sprung up into a roaring blaze. Uh, it's coming in this direction, and there isn't much of the storm left out here to discourage it. How fast is it moving? Uh, I make it out to be coming straight this way at... Floyd. Hello. Floyd, can you hear me? What's the trouble, Sonny? I don't know. That last crash of lightning seems to have put this radio out of commission. At least I hope that's all that's happened. What do you mean, Bill? Floyd was saying that a fire was headed in the direction of the tower. He was just about to tell me more when the line went dead. I hope it isn't anything out on his end that has caused the trouble. Anyway, this is no time to be joying. There's a fire out there, and we've got to get out and stop it fast. <laughs> Looks like a bad one, Bill. I'm coming this way. 
Where's that Floyd feller? He shouldn't stay up there in that tower with the fire coming straight for him. Say, maybe something did happen to him. I'm getting up there to see. You take charge, Stumpy. One fella up in that tower with the fire closing in is one too many. Two is ridiculous. They don't get down from there before the fire gets here. They'll be cooked alive up there. Floyd! Where are you, Floyd? Doesn't seem to be. Uh oh. There he is, over there on the floor. Mm. Doesn't seem to be hurt. Just unconscious. Floyd! Floyd, snap out of it, fella! Uh. What's, what's the matter? Come on, Floyd! We haven't got a whole lot of time. That fire isn't waiting on us. Fire. Come in this way. Look out. That's what I'm trying to tell you. Come on, Floyd. Let's see if... If you can get to your feet. Huh? Bill. What he... Oh, I remember. I was... Talking to you on the phone... About the fire. There was... There was this bright flash, and somehow you're here. It's no miracle, Floyd. You were probably stunned by a close flash of lightning. Right now, we have to get out of here. That fire is too close for comfort. Sure. Let's go. I'll see if I can stand. Here. I'll give you a hand. That's it. There you are. Oh, boy. Let's get out of here. Look at the fire. Come on! Whew. We'd never make it ten feet down that ladder before we'd be burned to a crisp. What are we going to, going to do? It's getting getting awfully hot up here. It's a good thing this tower is made of steel. We'd be burning right now. Well, as it is, it's, it's like we were inside a giant pot being cooked alive. Break out a couple of those windows over there. I'll break some out here. Okay. Why, <laughs> oh, it's... It's hard to breathe. I know. Fire's using up all the oxygen. We can lay on the floor for a while, at least, until it gets too hot. Bill, <coughs> I'm afraid. It sounds funny for a, a grown man to say it, but I'm scared stiff. That's understandable, Floyd. <coughs> Most men become very afraid when they're faced with the possibility of death. But, but what about you? you? You don't look afraid. I admit to being uneasy about the pain it might involve. <coughs> I don't think anyone likes to be hurt. But, but I mean, about dying. I'd rather be in a cast up to my neck for years than, than die. It's all in the way you prepare, Floyd. I guess you know something about that. Prepare? How can you prepare for this? You remember I said to you a few days ago that <coughs> there were some people who thought that what the Bible had to say was more practical than anything else. Yes. Well, this is the time when its practicality <coughs> shows up. And suddenly we're faced with the possibility that... We may be face to face with God at any minute. I see. I guess I've prepared for everything but the most important thing, death. Floyd, it isn't too late. But you must listen to me very carefully. Well, what, what do you mean? It, it isn't too late. In another five minutes, the way this floor's heating up and the, the air's getting <coughs> thin, we'll, we'll be dead. Floyd, one of the men who was crucified with Christ was also about to die. He lived a life of crime up to that moment. But Christ told him he was forgiven. I've, I've heard about that before. Some Easter pageant or something. I never really thought it meant anything. Listen, Floyd. We, none of us, <coughs> are fit to stand in the presence of God. The Bible you never got around to reading clearly states that no man is good enough. We've all sinned. Well, I know I have. But God has done something about that. He sent his son, Jesus Christ, <coughs> to live a perfect life. <coughs> pleasing his father and everything. This was not only an example to us. It was a life lived for us. <coughs> what, do you, what do you mean? After this flawless, God-pleasing life, 
Jesus was condemned as a criminal. Tortured. <coughs> executed by the Roman state. And even <coughs> condemned to the punishment that you and I deserve. I don't get it, Bill. You see, Floyd, God knew we couldn't live up to his standards. So he sent Jesus to do it for us. And then to die and be punished for us. But by taking for ourselves his perfect life and his sacrificial death, we can't stand in the presence of God. You... You mean God did that for me? That's right, Floyd. There was no other way. And there's no other way into the presence of God today but by Jesus Christ. But uh, even if I, I I say I accept what God did, how can anyone know whether, whether I, I mean it? I mean, I'm about to die. At least you've had a chance to show how God showed you serious about it. God knows how honest you're being, Floyd. You must accept his gift as though you had your whole life in front of you to live according to his <coughs> desires. He's far more interested in your honesty before him, Floyd, than the promises and claims you can make. Bill, I have to stand up. This floor is too hot. I agree. It's starting to smoke in spots. You see over there? It's like I was standing <coughs> right on the brink of hell. Don't forget, Floyd. God is reaching out for you from above. <coughs> What's that? I'm not sure. Let's take a look. I, I can't believe my eyes. What am I seeing? It's a helicopter. Used in rescue maneuvers. You said that God was reaching down from above. It, it looks like someone is. Come on, Floyd. Somebody's up there with a helicopter. And I have a feeling they'd like us to get aboard. <laughs> When we saw those ropes hanging down, well, I can't tell you how happy we were. <laughs> I think Floyd thought God was reaching for us personally. Well, it's just the same as far as I'm concerned. On the way up to the helicopter, I gave my life over to him. <laughs> that sure is wonderful. It's funny, you know. I've been careful all my life to be prepared for every situation that might come up. But I never thought of death at all. I know how hard it is to remember that we're going to die. Uh, like a feller once said, uh, we're all just one heartbeat away from eternity. But it sure ain't an easy thing to remember. Actually, it isn't even a necessary thing to remember. If you are, as Floyd would say, prepared. You know, Bill, I almost wish everyone who is just putting the things of God off to one side could go through an experience like we did up there in the tower. A thing like that sure rearranges things into their right order. Seek ye first the kingdom of God. Well, see you next week for more adventure with... Ranger Bill! Ranger Bill was produced in the radio studios of the Moody Bible Institute in Chicago.